Now, why do I feel like as soon as you say this, when somehow y'all gonna find the tapes? Like it's always, it's always somebody that's that has the archives. Like, yep, I was waiting for this. This is my moment. <laughs> Michael B. Jordan, awesome movie. Thank you. Appreciate that. A little action in there. Just a little bit. Dude, just a little dude bit. John Clark takes a beating and keeps <laughs> on ticking. Yeah, man, I, I definitely uh, took my lick, my lickings in this one. Uh, <laughs> but but it was a lot of fun. I've been dying to do a movie like this for a long time. So to finally you know, be able to be in this like kind of really physical action packed, you know, role was a lot of fun. So is John Clark from Wakanda? Because the guy <laughs> is just... You might be a cousin. You might be, a, you might be, you might be a cousin, man. But no, it, it, it was, um, you know, what, what happens when you lose everything, man, you don't have that much to live for. And, you know, you have somebody mm -hmm. who's like highly trained and capable in a lot of different areas, you know, um, and, and you kind of get a, you get a little bit of John, John Kelly, John Clark. A little bit. <laughs> how did this all come about? How did the, how did the movie come to you? Is this something you were pursuing? How did it happen? Uh, it was a project, you know, you know, my, my production company, we were, we were looking through, um, you know, libraries, certain IP, you know, that, that, that was there, a potential franchise vehicle for myself. Um, and we came across, you know, I've, I've been a big fan of Tom Clancy in the universe. Um, and, you know, saw, had the script that had already been adapted from the novel. Mm. Uh, so it had a lot of the great, a lot of the bones that were there. And then just really want to revamp it, you know, and make it current, mm. you know, really modernize it in a lot of different ways. Uh, and uh, we started to roll our sleeves up you know, for the next maybe year or so and really started to develop it and um, and get into it. And, you know, a year later or so, this is this is the, the script that we got. And obviously the, the, the script is always constantly evolving. Things change, things go, whatever the case may be. But um, the heart and soul of it is kind of what you guys uh, have. And uh, we're really, really proud of it. When do you even, I mean, listen, you've trained to be in shape before. We know that. Mm -hmm. But this seems like another level or yeah. is it not? Or is it just another day at the gym for Michael B. Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I definitely had to train for this one. I think, you know, when it comes to all the water work, you know, yeah. really having to get with specialists, military divers, being able to mm -hmm. um, deal with, uh, you know, the rebreather, which is this you know military device that actually uh, eliminates all the bubbles. So when you're underwater breathing, you know, there's nothing that hits the surface. So when you're going on stealth missions, when you actually actually be underwater and travel large distances, it, it takes um, all the, the bubbles away from that. So little things like, you know, not little things, but equipment, <laughs> special, special equipment like that are things I really had to train for in this one. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, like just being that physical, um, you know, these are all things I've been, you know, doing maybe on my spare time. So now that I got a chance to kind of assemble all of that together uh, in one film was a, was a special thing to do. So in your spare time, you're doing special missions to the Middle East <laughs> with a non-bubbler machine? <laughs> in my mind, Mark, in my mind. No, I think, I think the years of video game experience have like gave me like the muscle memory to like, right. uh, that it's like, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I've done that a million times in uh, Rainbow Six and Call of Duty. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's, that's easy for me. Um, but no, I think just having specialists, you know, working out with, uh, you know, um, you know, my trainer and my guy Buck and uh, Nils and Clayton and all the guys that are really great at what they do. Um, they really prepared me and they felt comfortable enough to put me in these situations and know I wasn't going to get hurt and know I was going to be able to get the job done. So um, it really speaks to the help that I have um, and the people that were in place to really get me prepared for this. Was there ever a point where you're like, I don't know if I want to do that. That's a little too far. Yeah. Yeah, it was um, <laughs> it it was a couple moments where I was like, okay, how high is that? I said, like, okay, that's, that's like 30, 15, 20 feet. All right, cool. And I gotta fall from that. I was like, all right, we we, we can pass on that one. Yeah. So like, no, <laughs> but there's there's certain things that obviously within reason, you know, um, you know that 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 I was 
like, okay, I was okay passing that one off, but uh, I'll <laughs> say about like maybe 95, 99, 90 to 95% of the stunts in the, in the film, um, I, I had an opportunity wow. to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks like fun, but I imagine when you get back to, you know, whether it's a hotel room or a house you're staying in, you're sort of feeling the aches. I don't care how oh. in shape you are, how young you oh. are. You yes. gotta feel it. Oh yes, no, no, for sure. This was definitely not an, an easy movie to do, um, especially my body. Definitely took it took its toll on me. Um, you know, long you know long hours, a lot of nicks and bruises, and you know, swollen things and and <laughs> and, and cuts and all that good stuff, man. Yeah, it, it was it was definitely a lot, um, but you know, comes with the territory. So, how many times have you signed up to play John Clark? You could tell me. Uh, <laughs> just this one for right now, but you know, at the end of the day, like this is something that we wanted to be. We wanted to, to be a franchise, you know. Um, yeah. And, and but we also, you know, know that you got to do one good movie first. You know, you have to you have to do a film that works, and this one works. So I'm excited to see, you know, what the future holds and how how we get to a Rainbow Six, you know, and uh, and see what that looks like. Do you want people to see it in the theaters? Uh, I think it's a mixture of both. Mm. You know, I think there is a, a, you know, I, I love going to the movie theaters, but I also love sitting at home and being able to watch a movie like this also, you know? <laughs> uh, so I think there's a, you know, there, there's a, there's a mixture of both, but you know, Amazon is a, is a wonderful place to like watch movies and, and to, and they have a great selection. So, I mean, like, why not be a part of that family, you know? And then you go and do a movie with what's that director's name? Famous guy. What's his name? Oh, Denzel. I don't know. Denzel. Yeah, yeah. It's that guy, yeah. Mr. Washington. Got it. Right. Yeah. Newcomer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you get the call. Denzel Washington wants you in the movie, or you want Denzel to be your director. I'm not sure which way it went. Um, <laughs> go with the first one. <laughs> what does that feel like? Denzel Washington wants you to star in his movie. Nah, it, it's a it's an incredible honor. You know, mm -hmm. I think I think humbling, you know, and like, oh, snap, really? OK, cool. Um, and then, you know, over the next few years, because this is this is this is maybe three or four years ago um, that the idea of this one, you know, was floated around and really working on the script, getting it together, mm -hmm. waiting for schedules to align. Um, uh, and and yeah, man, it was an incredible experience like he. He so vividly and clearly sees the movie, you know, and to be, you know, directed by him and pick up those 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 Denzel isms and those gems and all the wisdom that he has uh, in front of the camera and behind the camera. It was really cool for me to just like to learn, you know, mm -hmm. um, and to grow. And, and I, I think I grew grew during this project um, and also helped me prepare for like my next obstacle, you know, with uh, Creed yeah. 3. So it was like, I think everything happens in, in its right time and right moment. And uh, for me, I feel like this is this is right on time. What did you learn from him that you're going to take to your first directing gig? Uh, prep <laughs> and <laughs> shot listing, you know, mm -hmm. and and like getting a storyboard artist on early <laughs> specifically <laughs> uh, to start to start. I feel getting, like so you were just you were just thinking about something. What happened? Yeah, no, I just went to like, yeah, I do. I got I do have that call I got to make in a, <laughs> this evening <laughs> with my storyboard artist. Um, no, it's it's, it's uh, um, extremely important for me uh, that I'm going to be in front of like my time's going to be split. So mm -hmm. prep for me is so important um, uh, just to be as prepared as possible, you know, and I uh, have as much of the movie um, that I can clearly see in my head, have it, have it, have it, uh, have it visually there um, mm -hmm. with, with the tons of collaboration and putting a great team around me. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited. What do you take? It. What do you take from someone like Ryan Coogler? What do you take to that into your director's chair? Um, I think there's a certain like realness, you know, that comes with it. There's a, there's a, there's a, a way Ryan like captures character, um, and let, and, and let actors, um, breathe in scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and I and I love winners. You know, he he he's one, you know, a guy that, you know, me and him, we would always try to, you know, you know, how do we make every shot a winner? You know what I mean? So like being <laughs> being able to like, you know, have long takes like that is something that um, I'm looking forward to trying to like incorporate into this movie also. Um and and, and yeah, man, and, and Ryan, you know, when we got it, we got it. You know, and we and we and we kind of we move on from that. Mm-hmm. So just knowing that, you know, when it feels good and, and you know you got it, you know, it's, it's okay to move on. So, you know, those are just some of the the surface ones on top. Why Creed Three? Why was that the movie you said, you know what, this is what I want to make my directorial debut with? It's the it's the story I know the, the best. You know, it's the character I know the most. You know, it's the first mm-hmm. time I'm playing a character three times. Um, yeah. so to be able to, you know stem from that world uh almost eight years ago eight years wow you know since the first one i think eight i think eight yeah a little bit eight or nine and wow. uh be able to like you know i've been daydreaming about you know where adonis was going to be going you know what would mm-hmm. what would a three look like you know like the, the, i spent so much time imagining that so to be able to incorporate those ideas that you've been, you know, slowly developing over time and actually like, you know, have a script with those things in there, um, I think is truly special. And, and, you know, knowing how to, you know, do the boxing and understanding that system and 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 um, and characters that I know, um, not just Adonis, you know, um, mm-hmm. the other characters that I got a chance to get to know and, and, and explore and develop uh, along the way, um, very talented cast, you know, so it's a, uh, it seemed like all the ingredients were there for this one to to be my first movie that I direct, and uh, and it's a big swing, and um, I couldn't be more excited to like, you know, to step up to the plate. Do you think this is the last of the Creed movies, or is this the start of you directing one and then directing more Creed movies? Uh I mean, hopefully that we want to, you know, th- this movie gives us a feeling of it could be the last one, or it could be, you know. Um, could be more after that. I think we have some really interesting characters, you know, um, in this movie. And um, I think Adonis is, uh, I think he has more things to say. I think there's more, there's more places to go. So, you know, after this one, we'll, we'll see. And I know you've talked about Sylvester Stallone up being the third one that it was, you know, this is where the story was going and, you know, he's not in it. But was it a hard decision to make? Is it a hard call to make to someone like Sylvester Stallone and say, you know what? I think this time you're out, we're gonna keep going. Um, I mean, I think for me, you know, it I don't I don't fully make that call. I think it was more of a mutual <laughs> thing, you know. Mm-hmm. I think um, you know, Sly, you know, wants to do things that he wants to do. And sometimes we have to, you know evolve and adapt and figure out what that what that relationship looks like so Mm. you know i think as i start to step behind the camera you got to understand that you know there's a lot of other things in play sometimes it's it's rarely ever um you know one person making a call or a decision and that's the only reason why you gotta you gotta take in a lot of different elements so you know like i said sly is always you know welcome he's always around whether he's giving (laughs) advice or helping um, and, and if he wants to, you know, be in front of the camera, he'll be in front of the camera. If he wants to just like help from the back, then I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm great with that too. So. And I know you've spoken about, you don't know much about the Black Panther sequel. We, mm-hmm. No one does, but Marvel, I'm not sure if you saw the, the, the video montage they released this morning, which was this very mm-hmm. emotional. So Marvel released this whole thing with Avengers. They announced okay. release dates names of movies and okay. sort of it was a celebration of saying let's go back to the movies that's awesome and no i haven't had a chance to see it but now you haven't I'm, seen I'm, it yet. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna check it out i've been doing this all day but yeah I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, but i'm gonna make sure i check that out that's awesome well, they, they announced that the sequel is called wakanda forever nice that's a good ring to it i like that okay so i wanted to get your reaction to it what do you what do you think about that i think that's great i mean yeah. i think you know look, marvel does great work amazing work you know um and their characters are awesome so you know i know you know they 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 you know we all took a hit you know mm-hmm. um um with the loss of chadwick so for for them trying to figure out how to 
move forward, I know it was not an easy thing to do. So the fact that they, you know, settled on a title and, 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 and figuring out their story, I think is, is truly incredible. I mean, if anybody could figure out it's Ryan and, uh, and, and Kevin Feige and their wonderful producers over there is going to figure out the way to do it. There's a great moment in this montage and it's Stan Lee who's talking over it. Hmm. And he says, the ma that man next to you, he's your brother. And it's a shot of you in Chadwick. Oh man. Wow. Yeah, it's an emotional moment. Wow. Stan Lee saying that, Oof, man, bro. Yeah, that's, uh, I, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna check it yeah. out, man. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. When you hear the name Chadwick Boseman, what's the first thing that comes to mind now? Uh, you know, more time, shoulda, mm. shoulda, shoulda, you know, spent more time, wish I had more time, shit like that, honestly. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. So now let's take a little turn and ask you about your most memorable audition you ever went on. I usually say worst audition and everyone clamps up saying, I don't want to say worst, but what's that? No, nah, I've, I've, I've had some bad ones. <laughs> okay, tell me one, tell me one. Nah, <laughs> oh, man. Now, why do I feel like as soon as you say this, somehow y'all gonna find the tapes? Like it's always, there's always somebody that's, that has the archives. Like, yep, I was waiting for this. This is my moment. Uh, uh, <laughs> Where's the, just, uh, it was probably why am I doing this to myself? Go ahead. It's me. You yeah, can trust go ahead. Me. It's, a, it's me. It's just me. It's just Mark. Yeah, nobody, nobody's ever gonna see this. It's a, it's fine. <laughs> if it ever comes out, I'm coming after you. All right. You I know exactly. Uh I you think it was probably like it, it had I think it's probably like a Star Wars audition. Audition. Uh oh. Uh, what I, happened? I, that I had with JJ, I think. I think that was probably like my my worst audition to date. What happened? It just, it just, it, it just, I, I just was. It wasn't. It wasn't my. It was my best. It was. It was. It was probably my worst. It was probably my one to date that I remember for sure. Um, I think it was just couldn't wrap my brain around some of the sides because, like you know, when you mm -hmm. when you audition for you know uh, when you're reading for these you know high level projects mm -hmm. there's there's never really any specificity in the, in the sides you know everything's right. like like you know super secret. vague you know everything's a secret so it's just like you know reading it through i just couldn't connect it and it was just like yeah I just I definitely bombed that one for sure did did you know walking out going yeah that's not happening oh for sure <laughs> i'm pretty sure i ran out of there i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it was just like all right see you guys peace peace my man i'm out of here go ahead in the car, out of here, gone. <laughs> <laughs> Have you spoken to JJ about it since? <laughs> uh, I don't think I've seen JJ since then. Um, mm -mm. But I've, you know, obviously seen the projects, everything's been going great. So it's, it's clearly the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, but even like what you said, like the sides, everything's so secretive. Do you even know which movie you're auditioning for, which character, or is it? Uh, it it's, not, yeah. No, nah, you don't. Uh -huh. So it's not a lot to go 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 um go go off of. Uh, you 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 kind of understand. Um, like I said, just knowing the process, you under you understand why it's that way. You know, right. um, but as a as an actor, sometimes in those it, it's it's tough when they can't give you a lot to kind of go off of and stuff like that. Because you're like, well, should I do my Chewbacca voice right now? Maybe it's Chewbacca. <laughs> am I talking to Chewie right now? Where is he? <laughs> Where am I? Is that, yeah, it's one of those things. Um, and then during the pandemic, what what were you binging? What were those shows or movies that you just couldn't get enough of? And are are you a binger? Uh, I am a binger when I can, but sometimes I like to hold off on certain episodes just to kind of like, you know, string them along a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, but during the pandemic, I was, I watched Ozark. Ozark was really good. Got a chance that to get dark. That is the darkest. So good. It's so dark. So good. So, so good. Um, I just got finished watching uh, Invincible. Mm -hmm. That's on Amazon. It's an animated, animated uh, show. Really, really good. 
like incredible. Um, what else? Uh, do, 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 do. Love Death and Robots. I was checking that one out. I'm big on the animation stuff. Yeah. Um, what else was I watching show wise? Snowfall, I was watching some of. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, man. Did, did you ever watch anything really light? <laughs> A rom com? Rom coms? Ozark, rom-com. Snowfall. Uh, what should I think? Um, maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I not mentioned it. No. I think, I think, you know, I don't know. I think being around like, you know, safely, you know, family, you know what I mean? Yeah. was like my light moments. I had, you know, my, my sister had a baby. So being around my nephew. Oh, congratulations. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you. So uncle Mike was in full effect and we were, and we were, and we were, that, those were my good times, you know, being in the pool, just kind of, you know, hanging out like that is something I really get a chance to do. So I really soaked up those good times. Is he your first nephew? Your first nephew yeah. last time? Yeah, first, first, first anything. Yeah, that was that was great. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, listen, when things like that, it's happened during the pandemic, there's you gotta look for those bright spots. And that is talk about the opposite of the pandemic. Right? No, exactly. Life, man. It was um, yeah, he's like walking around now. He's mobile, you know what I mean? Now he's like <laughs> he's figuring out how these. These, these these legs and feet thing work and he's getting all mm-hmm. over the place. It, it's really, it's really cool to see, man. So it was, it was a good time. Did you get him a, you know, Creed robe? No, nah, I got, I, at that time <laughs> I just got finished doing with that with Morris. So I got him like, you know, it's a, like a little tactical baby vest, like little jumper <laughs> joint, you know what I mean? And a little, like a little, you know, bottle holder and stuff. And, and uh, yeah, so I, he's got it all fitted out with the military gear and all that good stuff. So he's, He's cool. An, man. an anti-bubbler for the pool. <laughs> so right? That'd have been great. That'd have been awesome. He's a little swimmer I'm, too. He loves the water. I'm fascinated by this. And I keep calling it an anti-bubbler. I don't know. What anti-bubbler? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A re- a rebreather. It's called a rebreather. A yeah. rebreather. A rebreather. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like you're breathing under like is it scary? Yeah. Because you know you naturally say, like, I can't breathe underwater. Well, well, you know, with the hookah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you have the you know, the, you know what I'm saying, the you know, the, the air piece, and then it's yeah. um it just filters the carbon carbon dioxide out of your mouth wow. through the this thing and just kind of just suppresses it, you know. So you kind you're you're breathing in your own air, you know. Um, so it's it's yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Don't get me lying about the science of it, but yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, Michael B. Jordan, it's always a pleasure. It's nice seeing you. I think probably the last time I saw you was Toronto. I think Toronto, I think it was for Mercy. Yep. Yeah. I think it was. Yep. Yep. Hopefully in person. You went to an in person event the other day looking good in Prada. I got all the Prada releases. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah. It was uh it was it was a good look, you know. Any reason to dress up, so you know. But what did it feel like to go out and sort of make an appearance for a film? I mean, when was the last time you got to do something like that? Really? It was it was really intimate, man. It was really really intimate and small, you know. Uh, but but it was good to be around people I haven't seen in a bit. But it was really like a, a real close close friends family. Um, That's great. Um, it just felt bigger because you know uh, we want to make it feel a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, last last night I went to the, the Vax Live concert at the SoFi okay. Stadium. Okay. How's the stadium? It's incredible. I okay. mean, you, you see it when you're coming into LA, you know, you can see that roof thing. Mm-hmm, it's like mm-hmm. that. Yep. And it, it looks like something that Disney would create. Like, an, it could be like a Wakanda Epcot Center kind of thing. But there were 25,000 people there. Okay. Okay. Which is just spread out. Like, I mean, obviously it was like spread out still, spread right? Spread out, but still like when you're going down an escalator, it's people going through a stadium. And it was just for a second, I was like, okay, this is cool. I'm like, oh shit. This is cool. <laughs> I'm in the stadium. When was the last time I was near 25,000 people? And yeah. everyone had a, everyone was front frontline workers and they had to show, you had to show your vaccine card. Um, okay. But the stadium, it's unreal. It's like, it. Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Well, Michael B. Jordan, thank you very much for coming to Just Variety. I always appreciate seeing you, talking to you, even if it's on a screen, a Zoom. No, nah, this is cool, man. I appreciate it, man. 
And uh, good right. talking with you too. And I'll talk soon, soon on Hopefully. something. And soon in person. My man. And break a leg with Creed 3. Can't wait. Thank you, bro. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Take All care. Right.